Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to recognize Sarah's six graduating members of the marching band. Our first senior today is Ryan Johnson. Ryan is being escorted by Rachel Blankenship Tucker. Our next senior is Ben Vanderhyde from Chatham, Virginia. Ben is being escorted by his mom and dad. Our next senior is TJ Baker from Canberra, Australia. TJ is being escorted by Emily Blankenship Tucker. Our 
Our next senior is Madison Klein from Ryanair, Virginia. Madison is being escorted by Chris and Denise Klein. Our next senior is DJ Dundee from Roanoke, Virginia. DJ is being escorted by his mother, Dawn Dundee. Our final senior in the marching band today is Gabby Mendoza from Hampton, Virginia. Gabby is being escorted by her mom and dad, Michelle and Rolando Mendoza. An important note here, Gabby will also be the first senior cheerleader recognized today. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it one more time for our graduating marching band seniors on Senior Day 23. As mentioned, Gabby Mendoza is our first cheerleader in the graduating class of 23. And our next senior is Morgan Hunley from Matoka, Virginia. Morgan is being escorted today by her mom and dad, Angela and Mike Hunley. Our next senior is Mary Mason from Strasburg, Virginia. Mary is, Mary is being escorted today by her mom and dad, Laura and David Mason, and her brother, Jess O'Connor. Our next senior is Brianna Weaver from Rocky Mount, Virginia. Brianna is being escorted by her mom and dad, Tammy and Lonnie. Tasia Yates from Ridgeway, Virginia. Tasia is being escorted by Taylaysia Wade, Gorse Wade, and Anya Yates. Let's hear it one more time for the graduating cheerleaders of Farham College 2023. And now we would like to recognize our 25 graduating senior football players. We'll begin today with Jamal Ash from Youngsville, North Carolina. Jamal is being escorted by Ahmad Ash and Sonia Ash. Jamal is looking to get a job in sports medicine and to continue playing football. Our next senior is Joshua Austin of Hampton, Virginia. He's being escorted by his father, Eugene Austin II, and his mother, Valencia Austin. Joshua has have a career in health and wellness coaching.
Today's next senior is Ty Bowers of Woodbridge, Virginia. Ty is being escorted by his mother, Crystal Johnson. In his career, he plans to get a master's degree in coaching and to begin a coaching degree, a coaching career, excuse me. Our next senior is Eric Bratcher Jr. from Martinsville, Virginia. He'll be escorted today by his mother, Shelby White, and his father, Eric Bratcher Sr. His career plans are still undecided. Today's next senior is Richard Lee, Hunter Candidate, from right here in Fair, Virginia, having gone to Franklin County High School. He's being escorted today by his dad, DJ Candidate, his mom, Lola, and his sister, Matt Candidate. He plans to work in investment firms and work his way up to being a financial manager or perhaps starting his own business. Our next senior is Ryan Downer of Jackson, New Jersey. Ryan is being escorted today by his mom, Nina Wilkinson. He plans to be an occupational therapist and not to do work. Our next senior is Cody Gibson of Salem, Virginia. Escorting Cody today are Dana Gibson and Joe Gibson. Cody hopes to be a sports broadcaster one day. Our next senior will be Leo Guerin of Manassas, Virginia. He'll be escorted by his mom, Tina Cooper, his dad, Brenton Cooper, and brother, Brenton Cooper, Jr. Leo hopes to join the FBI. Rashawn Harrison is our next senior. He's from Page County, Georgia. Excuse me, Page County, Maryland. And he's being escorted by his dad. Rashawn hopes to be a software engineer. Our next senior is Will Harrison from Franklin County, Virginia. Will is being escorted today by Charles and Anita Harrison. He plans to get a job in the health and human performance field. Our next senior is Quintel Harrison of Atlanta, Georgia. Quintel is escorted today by his mom and dad. And he plans to be a health educator and a coach. Our next senior is Braxton Hughes from the Outer Banks, North Carolina. He's escorted today by Paul and Brandy Hughes. And he plans to continue playing football.
Today's next senior is CJ Hughes from Martinsville, Virginia. She's being escorted by Angie and Ego Hughes. When CJ graduates, she plans to try to go pro, but also plans to be an English teacher in Dakota. She likes to coach football and the wrestling. Yeah, I'm not happy to wrestling, so I'm not in the middle of the year. Our next senior is Darian Johnson from Roanoke, Virginia. He's being escorted by his father, Denny Johnson, and stepmother, Rachel Hale. He plans to work as a physical therapy assistant in Roanoke, competing as a competitive powerlifter. From Powhatan, Virginia, our next senior is Joshua Jordan. Joshua will be escorted by his mother, Janice Jordan. Joshua plans a career in law enforcement and then to a later attend law school. Our next senior is Tacoma Kid from Ridgeway, Virginia. The code is being escorted by Stanley Curry and Jeff Harrison. He plans to be a physical therapist and athletic trainer. Our next senior is Jacob Lucas from Blacksburg, Virginia. He's being escorted by Chris Lucas, Terry Lucas, and Aaron Lucas. Jacob plans to become a game warden. Darian Moore is our next senior from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Darian is escorted by his mom, Jennifer Moore, his father, Darian Moore, and sister, Anastasia Moore. Darian's goal is to work in law enforcement. Our next senior will be Julian Morgan of Salisbury, North Carolina. He's being escorted by his mother, Angela Morgan, and sister, Aaron Baxter. Julian has plans to attend postgraduate school and become a doctor of chiropractic. Our next senior is Luke Morgan from L.E.J., Georgia. Luke is being escorted by his mom, Courtney Neely, and dad, Andy Morgan. In his career, he plans to go back to his hometown and become a PE teacher and football coach. Our next senior is Gerard Mosby from Chesterfield, Virginia. He's being escorted today by his mom, Michelle Mosby, his sister, Desiree Mosby, and his girlfriend, Brianna Morris. Gerard plans to open a personal training facility. Our next senior is Terrence Gale from Blue Mary. He's escorted by his sister, in his career, he plans to educate and motivate the youth and to travel the world.
Our next senior is Avion Smith of Double Georgia. He's being escorted today by Antoine and Sabrina Smith. In his career, he plans to make more connections and further his career in communication. Dion Wilson of Glen Allen, Virginia. He's being escorted today by his mom, Cheryl Fitzpatrick. Dion plans to have a career in criminal justice. Our next senior is Zion Wilson Smoke of Halifax, Virginia. She's being escorted today by. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to recognize head football coach Cleve Adams. He's closing out a 10-year head coaching career to become Farron College's athletic director beginning on January 1st. Congratulations, Coach Adams. So let's hear it one more time for the marching band, cheerleaders, and football seniors. And a big congratulations to Coach Adams on becoming Karen College's next athletic director. Slide. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to W.B. Adams Stadium here on the campus of Frank uh, Firm College and Firm Panther Football here on Cable 12. Today is Senior Day. Gosh, all of the activities you've been watching here, seen, see all those seniors out there being honored. That's a big day for those mm -hmm. guys and gals. And uh, uh, one day I'm sure they'll never forget. It's a big, big day. But the Panthers are four and five coming into this game, hosting a eight and zero Yellow Jacket team from Randolph Macon College for the final regular season home game. It's a big senior day. Cable 12 crew is all here for the action. The eye in the sky, Jamie Singleton, keeping watch on everything going on on the field. Steve Oaks producing the directing out in the truck. I'm Mike Doyle with me. Up here in the booth, analyst 
Josh Smallwood. Today, the ODAC game is the ninth time the Ferrum and Randolph Macon uh, have met here on the gridiron. Ferrum leads the series five to three, dating back to the first ever meeting in 1985. The Yellow Jackets have won the last three meetings, including last season when they rolled up a 563 yards in total offense and route to a 52-10 win over the Panthers in Ashland. Firm's latest win in the series was in 2018 at Randolph-Macon by a score of 28-23. That was Firm's first season at, in the ODAC. Firm is coming off a 48-16 ODAC loss at Bridgewater last Saturday on the road. Randolph-Macon beat Washington and Leaf 35-12 last Saturday in Ashland. The Yellow Jackets firmly seated at the top of the ODAC standings bring into today's matchup probably the most balanced attack the Panthers, Panthers have seen this year with 2,000 yards rushing and 1,900 yards passing. Can't get much more balanced than that. The defensive stats show a possible weakness, though, um, sort of grasping at straws while, while giving up the opponents only 380 yards. Uh, Randolph Macon has allowed 1,350 yards, though, through the air. This could be essentially in, the, uh, um, in what has been impenetrable yellow jacket armor. Even at that, they... They outscored their opponents 50 to 10. How about that for a coincidence? Uh, the last uh, uh, last three meetings <laughs> was it was 52 to 10 over the Panthers and Ashland. So uh, sort of a coincidence there, I guess. I'm just grasping at straws, looking at something that the coach can be positive about, Josh. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be tough uh, here this afternoon. They're, they're going, Ferrum's going to have their hands full uh, of Randolph Macon. Like you mentioned, very well balanced attack. They're number nine in Division Three in the coaches' poll uh, across the entire nation. So, so a big time football team rolling in here. You mentioned they're eight and zero overall, five and zero in the ODAC. This is a pretty strong conference they're playing in. Uh, you know, so so good competition week to week. You mentioned that balance attack. Uh, with Nick Hale there, Drew Campanelli, uh, Cullen Martin, Zach Bowman, going to get a good dose of on the air, on the ground from those guys. Uh, they, they've got multiple running backs just beyond the, the ones we've named there. I think five guys tend to touch the football pretty regularly, spread the ball out through the air, and uh, the, the Black Hats are really going to going to have their hands full now on the flip side of that you mentioned they're only giving up 10 points a game they're scoring a whole lot and it's not like their defense is any slouch either so only giving up 10 points a game over the eight games so far this season linebacking core led by neftali reyes and tony skinner um, dbs have 15 interceptions on the year so far eight fumbles recovered by this defense they're flying to the football and uh, you, you talk about a well-rounded team, not just offense. They've got the defense to go along with it, and Farum's going to have to come to play here on senior day. Yeah, you know, and, and since the uh, uh, injury to senior quarterback Braxton Hughes, freshman Nathan Carr has stepped into the quarterback assignment for the Panthers, getting lots of snaps and uh, helping the Panthers climb up two rungs on the ODAC ladder. They're not at the bottom. And uh, last week he shared the snaps with uh, – Another freshman, Chase Altus, along with some young um, running backs, Coach Cleve Adams continues to work on the winning recipe for this young firm team. Yeah, Coach Adams just honored here for, uh, for his coaching duties. He's going to be moving over to athletic director at the end of the season. Uh, but, but Coach has put together a, a very young but talented offense. There's only one senior starting on that side of the ball here this afternoon. Uh, freshman backfield with a freshman quarterback and running back and um, you know a lot of sophomores there top to bottom on the offense but on the defensive side a little bit different story uh, have quite a few more seniors on that side six seniors starting on the defensive side of the game so that's uh, that's an area that, that they may be able to uh, capitalize on their defense has been fairly strong this year for for uh, the from what we've been seeing but they're going to have their hands full some seniors worth mentioning, Hunter Canada, 61 tackles total for Farum. 
Uh, Tyree Barton, three interceptions there from the corner position. And local Will Harrison, 27 tackles from the defensive line position, four and a half for those for a loss and two and a half sacks. So Will's normally pretty busy across that front. That's just three of the six seniors that you'll see starting this afternoon. But a beautiful day for football. We just saw the seniors honored, national anthems being sung. Feels like football. Uh, and then we're going to have the Hall of Fame induction at halftime. So busy day here at Farum, and football is going to be a big part of that. Yeah, and we'll be right back for all of that action right after this break. You're watching Panther football here on Cable 12. Thank you. 
Getting ready to play football here, Josh. Beautiful day, as yes, you sir. said earlier. Uh, Firm, Virginia is no prettier place in the world, except maybe Snow Creek. Right That's down right. The road. Yeah. But it's uh, really uh, going to be a chimichanga day today. That's yes, sir. Sure. Put the cheese all over the chimichanga. It's going to go. be a good one. Got the Aguilar back deep. Also, Brent looking for a little bit of a space here to return it back out. Yeah, going to be brought down there on the 20-yard line. Not a not a great return there. It's been an area that uh, the Black Cats have done a fairly good job at this year. Kickoff return, they've been able to get decent field position, but not much going there. Going to have to come out and uh, get started quickly against this uh, tough Randolph-making team. So we'll see what they have going on the offensive side. Uh, Jalen Lee and uh, a couple, couple freshmen back there, but they've been good. Yeah. Nathan Carr will be calling the signals for the Black Hats. Carr takes a snap, back to pass, first off. It's his receiver down the field. That's uh, number one. Yeah, Naftali Reyes there. Mentioned him earlier in pregame. He's going to be flying all over the field this afternoon. Uh, one of the top linebackers leading the team in tackles for the season. That is a an American National Bank first and ten. Right off of the bat. Carr handing off up the middle. Jalen Lee getting about four yards on that one. Lee, yeah, a lot of carrier. a lot of guys in there on the tackle. Main, main one there, Jackson the Deaver for Randolph Macon. One thing I like to see, uh, you got a lot of hats flying to the football on defense. Nobody was standing around spectating there. Uh, plenty of guys flying in for Randolph Macon to, to make sure that tackle uh, happened. But, hey, six yards from Jalen Lee, uh, five, six yards there. So, good good start here, first two plays of the drive. Second down and four. Back to Lee again. Going to get enough this time for a first down. Over the 40-yard line, Lee. Cutting a little flip to get that last yard or two, but yeah, he got it. You'll see here on the replay, Cade Jones comes flying in, uh, cuts his legs out from underneath of him, but he goes rolling across for the first down. That's going to be two first downs here to start the game for the Ferrum Panthers. Uh, very positive yardage here so far. That offensive line firing off for the ball quickly. Carr getting in a little bit of a tough spot there. No flag out there. Going to give him the benefit of the doubt on that late hit. Yeah, Wade Grubbs getting down the line. Defensive tackle here. You'll see uh, see him chase through, gets over down the line, and eventually runs him out of bounds. Pretty good he'll speed get, there. Yeah, for a defensive tackle, he was keeping up. So that young man was getting getting down the line pretty quickly. Good, good awareness there. Second down and eight. Carr brings him to the line again. Carr handing off to Lee again, off tackle. Yeah, going to have a flag behind the play here from the umpire. That's typically going to be a holding hold. call. Yeah, right. Got some whistles here at the end. Athletic trainer coming on the field as we get the call officially as a holding on Farum. Those will kill a good drive, so not what you're not what you want to see if you're Coach Adams here on the first drive of the game. It's going to yeah. put them behind the sticks. Here. You don't want to see your starting uh, right guard, Quintel Henderson, limping off the field either. They're doing a good job. They're firing off of the ball. That's right. But, uh, yeah, Quintel, the lone senior on the offensive side of the football. Uh, young man really gets after it up there. So hopefully we'll see him back in the game here soon. Second down, 17 now. Makes your play call just a little different, I would think. Well, Got another and this whistle. is going to make it a little bit more difficult. I think we're going to have an all, a false start on uh, Farrell. Going the wrong way quickly if you're a Panther fan. Yeah, approaching the wrong 20-yard line. Yes. Yeah, back to where they officially started and 
all the yards they've gained, they've given up here with the last two whistles. Carr, freshman, doing a good job settling into his quarterback position. Taking this one up the middle himself. Grubs in there on the tackle. Uh, scramble play for Farum brings him up to third and still pretty long, Mike. Yeah, still about 15. You, you, you don't have plays in your playbook that, that you're really like, hey, I, I feel confident I'm going to get a good 15 right here. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah, right. you did, you know, you'd win a lot of football games. Yeah, if, you wouldn't if, be on third down. <laughs> no, you wouldn't be on third down if you had those in your playbook. So not where you want to be as a coach. Car back to pass, looking for somebody open downfield, not finding anybody. They're letting their expand in the field here quite a bit. And letting those tackles oh, take uh, place out in the wider field here. Yeah, going to bring on Seth Deaton, the punter, also the place kicker for the Panthers last week. Uh, broke the, the Ferrum Panther field goal record. He, he's uh, sitting at 23. The record was 22. And Seth's just a junior, so he's going to continue. Another year. Yeah, one more year. And so every field goal beyond this is him uh, extending that record even further. So a uh, very talented young man there at the punter and kicking position. Marinelli back at the 20-yard line, taking it to 21, looking for some running room. Got some blockers out there, opening up. Down the sideline. Yeah, good return there. Yeah, out to the 45-yard line. Uh, Yellow Jackets will be swarming out there about the 45-yard line. Look at all our B jokes out there. I know, gotta, can't, gotta get it out of my system somewhere. <laughs> Yeah. It was Derwin's uh, tip last last you know, night as we left. He said, gotta, hey, make sure you get your good B jokes ready. Yeah. Well, we had a hum in our. Uh, we had hums in our ears, ears yeah. this morning, you know, working on the bugs on the system. So maybe that was what it was. Yeah, we'll take a, our first look here at the, the Yellow Jacket offense. Campanelli taking the snap, finding the receiver out there on 50 yard line. That's Marinelli getting it out over the 30 yard line into deep into the Panther territory. Gonna be at about the 28 yard line. First down and 10, that's a Matty Law Firm. First down and 10. Yeah, quick strike right there. Breaks a, a couple tackles. Eventually had his legs taken out from underneath of him, but a uh, big first down there on their first play of the game by Randolph Macon. Got Campanelli under center. Running the eye formation, handing off to big number 17 coming up quickly. For the offense don't have him on the two deep. Sophomore Hunter Callahan in there, uh, at last home game, called his name quite a bit uh, off of that defensive line position, brings him down for a stop. So uh, future is bright there for Hunter. Quite a few tackles for a loss in our last home game that, that we covered here at Farum. That was Jackson Jones getting those two or three yards. And this one going up the middle. Yeah, the big fullback there rumbling yeah. and tumbling. And it's a good sized young man there. Yeah, Mike. Nick Hale, senior 5'8, 196, that loaded the ground. And uh, they're going to list him at 196. That's what they got here. And, and, and I'm, you know, I'm pretty good at cattle now. I can guess at cattle. So, uh, 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 he, he, uh, that's. That's a big he one. He might have, six. must have weighed himself really early in the morning or that something. That was just I after two a days yeah, after I he guess. lost that <laughs> yeah, That's right. Yeah. And he's back in there. Squares those shoulder pads up nicely. Hale picking up another four yards. Fuller Howard in there on the stop for the, the Ferrum Panthers. Second down and six. Yellow Jackets moving on down. Inside the 20, inside the 16 yard, 15 yard line. Campanelli getting his team up to the line, tossing it off to the man coming across the, that's Clark. Yeah, Clark gets the edge and 
heads on in for the, what is that, about a 13-yard yeah. touchdown run. Yeah, we, here with about eight minutes and 17 seconds in the first quarter. Plenty of running room, good blocking out there. Uh, those receivers coming over there and pushing out those would-be tacklers. Yeah, going to see a lot of different players in the mix Kyle here this afternoon for Randolph Macon, very talented team. Kyle Isle up. It's up, and it's good. This is good. Oh. Advantage. Kick yeah, it on you. over to the soccer field. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that one had plenty of leg on it. Yeah. Brings the score up to Randolph Macon, breaking the ice first, 7 to nothing. You're watching Firm College football right here on Cable 12. Long ago, Carillion Clinic made a promise to be here every moment. That means the moment you need care, and every other moment too. Because by providing tools, support, and guidance to take charge of your health on your terms, we're helping you live better every day. Carillion Clinic is right here for you from moment one. Powering your home with propane has never been easier than when you work with Hall Propane. Imagine never running out of hot water with a tankless water heater, cooking like a pro on a gas range, or staying cozy with a propane log set, furnace, or heater. Then when it's time to cool off, Hall's HVAC techs keep your system running efficiently. Since 1959, Hall has been providing top-notch service at competitive prices. Live in comfort with Hall. Visit hallpropane.com or come see us on Highway 220 south of Rocky Mount. Sometimes through no. Owl with a deep kick. Going to be taken there on the 10 yard line. Yeah, called That'll for be. the fair catch there. Yeah. It's called for on the return. It's going to be a tough one for Aguilar fair. Aguilar rounding that one up. Going to move it out to the 25 yard line. I think it's new this year. Yeah. Uh, take the 25 instead of risking being pinned a little deeper there. Open and drive for Farum had the football for four minutes and had some momentum going. Just uh, th those penalties really, really put them behind the chains and hard for them to recover. We'll see how they bounce back here, Mike. Carr handed off to Lee. Lee cutting back. Sort of lost his footing there. Slipped out, it's gonna end up back at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one, be second down and 10. Yeah, defensive lineman, TJ James in there on the tackle and uh, got Yellow Jackets on the just, field and yeah. Yellow Jackets in the booth here, Mike. So I, guess I just did my part. Hear one of us holler, it's the Yellow Jacket. <laughs> mm. and this I one, thought it was a stink bug. but No it, man, it ain't no stink bug. <laughs> He's got a stinger on it. Yeah, he does. Lee coming up the middle, just missed that big hole right to the left. Yeah, we'll it's see easy that. for us to yeah, see them up on. here. That's there. right. I was going to say, we'll see if we get a replay so we can, we can go ahead and uh, we'll yeah, see here. Here it comes. Watch right to right there. Yeah. Had, oh. <laughs> Had a hole there. Got another yellow jacket up here in the booth, yeah, Mike. Well, Let's see if you can kill this yeah, one. Yeah, I think they're. Uh, I'm telling yeah, you. We'll get them one at a time up That's here, right. man. They may be the starting uh, special teams. I don't know. Got, oh, defender coming in around. Got a flag. Yeah, a lot of pressure there. Looked like maybe a holding call, probably. Yeah, number 49, Owen Aruza for Randolph Macon. And. A lot of pressure there. Do have a flag on the field. We'll see. I'm gonna call a chop block. Don't see that very often it, you're right. these days. So uh, the old high low. Yeah, it takes a it takes a lot of planning to do that. It, it, yeah, uh, it's really tough to call, and uh, this firm just happened to be real. Uh, Fortunate. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, they they declined the penalty yeah. on that one, and uh, hey, that calls there for a reason. You, you get somebody hurt with that oh, style yeah. of blocking, and uh, there, there's rules about about how you can get on a, another player's uh, lower body, and rules about how you can't. And 
So uh, cut block is still a thing in college football, but you, you can't have another guy go ahead and finish off uh, from the top. So they actually are going to go ahead and – well, that, that's the spot of uh, where he was sacked Sack, back there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I wonder Ruza gets the sack on that instead of the, the chop block penalty. Farinelli back to get – receive the punt from Deaton. Big oh, Farron Panther big, bounce on that. Big mistake there by a yellow, yellow jacket out right there. A couple I'm yellow jacket mistakes up here. Yeah, the yeah that's We're true. They're not going to make any more <laughs> mistakes, I don't think. But, uh, so not much going there for the Panthers, and it's going to give Randolph-Macon the ball back on that last drive for Randolph-Macon. Uh, pretty quick work, only lasted about two and a half minutes, five plays, 55 yards, ended in a touchdown there for the Yellow Jackets. They're going to get the ball at the 20-yard line with a full field to play. Ferrum College has been able to move offensively. On, on the offense, been able to move it when they run the plays. Yellow Jackets back. It's Campanelli finding a deep receiver. He was wide open. Hit him in stride, and perfect. sometimes that's the toughest one to catch is the one you're expecting to be perfect. And Zach Bowman surprised <laughs> by that one being so easy to catch. Hey, I tell you what, beautiful pass there from Drew Campanelli. Right over the left yeah, shoulder. Yeah, man. Ooh. Yeah, had, had a – a Tyree Barton there behind him, first down. So second and ten here for the Yellow Jackets. Got a first look at Campanelli's arm. He got a pretty good shotgun there. He did, yeah. I well, might ought to call it a rifle. That was farther than my shotgun to shoot. So what kind of shotgun you got? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have a gun. I'm sorry. Uh, Nick, <laughs> <laughs> clarify that yeah. Fuller, yeah, Fuller Howard there on the stop, two yard gain. It's going to bring up third and eight. So, uh, could be a, a, a big moment here in the first quarter for the Farron Panthers if they can get the stop here, force the punt, and get that football back. What it's going to take though is mistake-free football from the Farron Panthers, and we've not seen that so far here in the first quarter. Have had some untimely penalties that have really hurt, but that last big punt by Seth Deaton. Uh, could be the shot in the arm they're looking for if they can hold right here. Got the big man Hale beside of Campanelli. Campanelli back to pass. Got plenty of time to find a receiver and does. Yeah, he hauls that one in. Uh, Tyree Barton for the Farron Panthers eventually is able to, to bring him down. They're going to get the ball at the 40-yard line now, first and 10. Yeah, Colin Martin making that reception. Doing a good job of getting open, and, and uh, you know, Campanelli had all day on that one. First and 10, that's a goal custom embroidery. First down and 10. <laughs> Campanelli calling the signal, standing on the 35 yard line, finding the receiver down field. Marinelli. Nella. Excuse me. Yeah, tough, tough break there. Ian Ashworth able to uh, to bring him on down, but we just see there a little mistake on defense for the coverage and, and uh, five to ten no. yards. When the Yellow Jackets are very uh, observant. The uh, Panthers shut down their running game. All they got to do is drop back and throw a couple passes, and that seems to loosen it up. And we'll see here that's Hale again up yeah, the good, middle. Good vision there, but also good play calling uh, from the coaches' part. When they, they see that certain opening in the in the, the secondary, then, hey, okay, we, we've got this route. We can have this, this position uh, player run, and I think that's what you're seeing a little bit of here. And they found a – uh, a piece of green grass that nobody's been sitting in. Yeah, and nobody's occupied, so they decided yeah. to get there. I said, okay, let's get somebody in that space and, and see what he can do with it. Campanelli calling the signals. And he's back to pass again. Got got an open receiver down there. That's Marinella. Yeah, he's still, still running. Hanging got a lot. On to got it. Blockers in front of oh. him. He's going to rumble and uh, one yard shy of a touchdown. 
Started down around the 40-yard line. That's going to be a 38-yard scramble for Campanelli instead of, you see he's got multiple offensive linemen out there in front. Yeah, right before he Campanelli decided to run that one, uh, his receiver broke out, and Marinella broke out in the open. He just decided to keep it on, and a good decision down there on the two-yard line, first and goal. That's an Angie McGee. Franklin County home team, first and ten. Yeah, those are those are tough. Uh, Farham had good pressure there from the defensive line and linebacking core, but uh, with, he was able to scramble enough. And, Mike, we're going to see a touchdown here. Yeah, that's Hale, the, the big guy, 5'8", 196, senior. Rambling into the end zone for the second score for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, eight seniors on the offensive side of the football for – Randolph making only one senior on uh, offense for for Farum, so uh, senior-led team, and and they're they're showing their experience here in the first quarter with their second score of the game. Isla Jr. kicking this one for the extra point attempt, and it's good. Brings the score up to 14 to nothing. The Yellow Jackets. You're watching Panther football right here on Cable 12. Sometimes, through no fault of your own, you need an attorney, a successful, experienced attorney who'll fight for you and protect your rights. Will Davis at the Davis Law Firm is that attorney. Will's an experienced Virginia trial lawyer in Roanoke, Franklin County, and beyond. He won't feel like you're on an assembly line, and he won't settle your case to avoid a trial. He will pursue the compensation and insurance settlement you deserve. For compassionate and aggressive representation, contact the Davis Law Firm. Experience. Driven. Results. Doyle Custom Embroidery is your family-owned, faith-based choice for custom embroidery, screen printing, and heat printing right here in Franklin County. If you want to improve your business's image, promote your event, or just create your own custom product, then Doyle Custom Embroidery is your choice. We can embroider anything that will hold a stitch. Check out our huge selection of quality products at dcestore.com. And remember, we'll keep you in stitches. Aguilar and Lee back deep for the Panthers. Al kicking it deep and high. Aguilar taking it on the 12-yard line, coming back out just over the 20-yard line before he's swarmed under. Yeah, so we'll see uh, if they're able to get anything going here. You, you play penalty-free football, and you give yourself a chance to uh, keep that ball moving down the field. We haven't seen them be able to do that so far, but have, have had some good possessions on offense and have been able to move the football against this defense. But unfortunately, uh, a, a flag here, a flag there, has, has really changed what could have been for the Farron Panthers in the first quarter. Got about three minutes uh, Showing on the scoreboard, two minutes and 57 seconds in the first quarter here. 14 to nothing early, Randolph making. Car calling the signals. Got a receiver out in the flats. Yeah, good play there. A little swing pass into the flats. Gets up to around the eight, nine yard gain. And Mike, that, that's what we've seen them be able to do so far. So uh, if they could put a full drive of this kind of football together. Yeah, that's Kyle Bowers getting out to the 31 yard line almost, maybe 30 and a half yard line. It'll be second down and a half yard. Yeah, so far today, Carr's completed uh, both of his passes and um, been sacked once though, pretty tough. As Bowers again taking it from the line of scrimmage, not getting back to the 30-yard line. Yeah, tripped up by Neftali Reyes there from the linebacking position. Going to bring up third and one, which is kind of where they started there on that one. But hey, third and one's a whole lot better than third and 21, which we've seen a little bit of here recently. So that's progress. Carr calling the signals, taking his time, hoping maybe he might get a little help from that defensive line. No help there. You know, you got a senior laden Yellow Jacket team. Don't make quite as many mental errors. And that one you're going to see call back on the Panthers, looks like. 
Yep, a little bit more of what we've been talking about. And uh, as a coach, those are the ones that just drive you crazy because you know when to snap the football. You know when the football is going to be snapped. And uh, it's not so loud here in Ferrum that you can't hear the quarterback. So, Well, you know what the coach is going to say, too. What's that? Watch <laughs> the ball, right? Yeah, when in doubt, look, look, look at the at ball. Look at the ball. Yeah. 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 So, hey. Uh, it's going to be third and six, and that's a little tougher than third and one. We pay you the big bucks for that analyst. <laughs> <laughs> well, they pay me the yeah, big bucks. Yeah, gonna throw that one no, away. Threw that one away. He's going to bring out the punt team again, Deaton. We'll have to kick this one away. Getting his workout early here. In the game, minute and a half left to go here in the first quarter. Had a big punt last time. Took a Farron Panther roll all the way down to the 20. Well, you want to bet that uh, Marinella don't catch this one in the air this time if he can get to it. Yeah, I'd say that's probably the, what they whispered in his ear. Hey, yeah, try catching that, this. One. That last one rolled 62 yards. Yeah, <laughs> and he's gonna have to make it, and he does this one in a good move to break a loose. He's got a flag right behind him. Yeah, I think that flag's gonna going to see uh, go 10 yards the other direction for think you're right. against Randolph-Macon. That's the indication as we see it. We'll see what they come up with. They're discussing it out there. Blocking the back. Yellow Jackets. Paul was going to be spotted on the 30-yard line. Ish. Sure you know nope, going to be <laughs> 10 <laughs> yards <laughs> from the 33, so that'll be about the 23-yard line. Split the difference. Yeah. Big punt ending up a uh, huge <laughs> gainer there. Deaton doing his job back there with his foot. Yeah, great job there by Seth Deaton. Given the Farron Panther defense a chance. So far, been a really balanced attack for Randolph making 60 yards on the ground, 75 through the air, six for Campanella first back to pass. And did not able to connect out there. No, you'll see here great coverage by the Panthers flying to the football. Boom. Yeah, hit really as the ball's coming in there and, and, and could have been one of those that look at what I found headed on for a pick six. Nobody was able to get underneath of that for either team, though. But, hey, number 44, Fuller Howard. We, we've said his name a couple times here this afternoon for the Farron Panthers already. He's, he's going to have himself a game if he keeps going. Minute 14 seconds left here in the quarter. Campanella calling the signals. Man, Marinello out to the 32-yard line, just shy of a first down. Yeah, they're taking advantage of uh, some soft coverage here. You see he's about 10 yards off of the line of scrimmage, and uh, they're going to have to tighten that coverage up a little bit because they're just picking them apart underneath, uh, giving him at least five to seven-yard head start there, and that they're – they're using that to their advantage, Mike. And yeah. uh, if they don't shut that down quickly, they're, you're going to continue to see that. And that's how big plays happen. Yeah, even though Bowman did not connect on that long pass, it sure did change the defensive strategy. This one is, Hale is going to be rambling across for first and 10. I mean, that's Clark, excuse me. Yeah, Mark Callahan in there. First down for the Yellow Jackets. This is the American Panthers. National Bank, first and 10. So far on defense for the Panthers, Ian Ashworth leading the team with five total tackles already today from the free safety position. Tyree Barton with four tackles from the corner. Both of those being defensive backs, uh, that's normally not the, the area that you want leading your team in tackles. But, Mike, it's going to be the end of the first quarter here in Farum. Randolph making 14, Farum Panthers nothing. Watching Panther football here on Cable 12. When it's time to celebrate the life of someone special, turn to Connor Bowman Funeral Home. 
With two full service facilities, we offer professional care and service to our community. 100% owned and operated, offering you the traditional historical Lynch, Connor, Bowman, and Franklin County's most modern and newest facility on 220 North. We can assist you with prearranged funerals and we house an on site crematory. We can come to your home to make arrangements and pre arrangements. We offer the release of one white dove, one memorial video, and video of the service if held in one of our chapels at no cost to you. Connor Bowman Funeral Home, Rocky Mount, and 220 North. Okay, we've switched ends of the field here. Got a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets are able to move this ball at, at will so far. Campanella calling the signals, handing off to Clark. Clark getting outside, looking for a block and finds one. Still going. Gets out over the first yard marker, first down marker. Yeah, eventually brought down by linebacker Fuller Howard there for the Panthers. and. You see it on the replay. Yeah, those yards after contact, look at him just driving those legs, and, and Howard eventually able to get him out of bounds there, doing a great job to keep things going. Maddie Law Firm first and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Tell you, those guys are not going down with the first hit, that's for sure. No, they definitely stay in the weight room. You can tell these guys are... Big, strong, young men, a lot of seniors, upperclassmen out there on that field, years in the weight room. Mitchell Johnson on the carry there for the Yellow Jackets, getting about five, six yards. He's second down and four. Yeah, brought down by Tacoma Kidd of the Farron Panthers there from the defensive end position. Actually make that five. Second down and five left. For a first down for the Yellow Jackets. Pass over the middle, connecting with Marinella. Yeah, eventually brought down by Tyree Barton, but not after a big first down there. We talked about those really quick passes right out of the backfield, get them into space, uh, that, that softer coverage there. Uh, you see them uh, set up in zone and, and they're not, not checking them at the line of scrimmage, giving them enough time underneath to pick them apart. And as, as we mentioned earlier, that leads to big plays. Slide through one tackle here, one tackle there, and hey, 20 some yards later, it's a first down and they're inside the red zone this afternoon. Campanella with a good view up there. Johnson taking this one off tackle. Takes it inside the five yard line down at the goal. Yeah. Very Johnson close to the goal there. line. Coming back though, Mike. Oh, Tough break. That was a good run there. Good blocking up front by the, well, I guess it could be uh, because they were holding or something. <laughs> it may help. You know. The holding helps. Yeah, we're not going to say it was all. Uh, all on the holding call. But it call, looked good from up here. Did look good. They had a lot of bodies up the field blocking. Uh, those offensive linemen moving up the field steadily, doing their job, not just standing on their laurels and, and watching. So, uh, hey, that's what you're looking for. But it finds them in a first and 20 position here. Going to have a timeout, Mike, Yeah. Uh, with 12 minutes and 58 here in the second quarter. And we'll take one, too. You're watching Panther football here on Cable 12. Long ago, Carillion Clinic made a promise to be here every moment. That means the moment you need care, and every other moment too. Because by providing tools, support, and guidance to take charge of your health on your terms, we're helping you live better every day. Carillion Clinic is right here for you from moment one. 
Powering your home with propane has never been easier than when you work with Hall Propane. Imagine never running out of hot water with a tankless water heater, cooking like a pro on a gas range, or staying cozy with a propane log set, furnace, or heater. Then when it's time to cool off, Hall's HVAC techs keep your system running efficiently. Since 1959, Hall has been providing top-notch service at competitive prices. Live in comfort with Hall. Visit hallpropane.com or come see us on Highway 220 south of Rocky Mount. Campanelli standing on a 30-yard line looking for somebody wide open. And oh, oh, nice defensive play. Off. Julian almost. Morgan there from the free safety position for the Panthers. Found it in his hands in the end zone, wasn't able to haul it in, and he is fired up about not – not being able to do that, but hey, great job, young man. Prevented a touchdown. Absolutely. You can't be too disappointed there. But hey, big play. They were looking for a big play themselves, and uh, yeah, good job, Julian, stepping up. Uh, almost. Almost. But it's not but horseshoes. So. Good <laughs> or hand grenades. So. <laughs> but did break up that touchdown pass, right, which yeah. was a big deal. Be Campanella back in. Over the middle. And the yeah. ball is loose. It looks like on the ground, Farron Panthers saying they've got it. We yes, do have a flag we, at the end of the play. and We do have a strike person pointing the other direction. Yeah. We'll see. Referee saying Farron ball, but have a flag. I don't think this flag is going to affect the game uh, or who is going to uh, have the football here. Maybe a half the distance to the goal if it's on Farron, but I don't think they're going to give the ball back to Randolph Macon. We'll see how they sort this one out. A little bit of discussion out there as we watch the replay. Definitely a loose ball. Panthers quick to pounce. Yeah, I always in, in, enjoy the uh, the baseball game when they play the Jeopardy. Going to wave that flag off. No harm, no foul. No harm, no foul. Yeah, that's right. So, Farron Panther football. Yeah, I'm sure that discussion went sort of like, oh, let's just give it to him. Don't you think that's the way they did? <laughs> I doubt it. Yeah. We'll dream on. And yeah, Eric, right. Well, in a dream. perfect world. Yeah. Panthers working out of their end zone. Carr and Lee. Yeah, tough, about two yards in their end zone. Tough, tough position, position to find yourself in, and you definitely want to get some yardage here, get out of that end zone as quick as possible. Carr going to take it himself, trying to give him a little bit of working room, but actually uh, maybe gave up about a half a yard. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a loss there on the play. Number 12, Alex Biddle on the stop. He's second down and 10. Panthers just looking to get Deaton a little bit of kicking room here. He would be right on the back line of the goal line. Yeah, got to give yourself a little bit of room to work if you're the quarterback or the punter. Sending Lee in motion. He's going to take it up the middle, try to get a yard. And that's about all he's got. Yeah, I don't think that was a designed run there, but I, I think he was looking for somebody else to give the ball to. They wasn't there, so he went ahead and filled the gap in the process and uh, was able to get a couple yards. Going to be third and eight here for the Panthers and will be taking at least the snap outside of the end zone on third down, but that's going to keep Deaton in the end zone if they're not able to get the first. Third and long. A little bit of a wing tee. Oh, just staying out of. Kai Bowers, Kai Bowers just staying out of the end zone. Yeah, it was very close to being two there. Wade Grubbs in for Randolph Macon. And hey, <laughs> going to be a pretty tough punt here for Deaton. Putting right off the end line. Yeah, this is one of those, if you can't get it off quick, just step out. You don't want to give up a fumble for a touchdown or anything like that in the end zone. So uh, getting too much pressure, just, just go ahead and step out, take the two. Don't want to give up six here. Uh, preferably you get the punt off. Marinelli 
at the 35 back to the 40 yard line to take this one. Looking for a little running room. Good coverage there by the Panthers. Yeah, Ball's going to be marked at about the 38 yard line. Yeah, very good job there for the Panthers. Uh, when, when you're taking a punt like that, you've got everybody staying home to block. You're, you're sending very few folks up the field, which a lot of times could result in a big return. It doesn't. Uh, it's covered pretty well by the Panthers and gives their defense a chance to go to work here and see if they can get a stop. Panthers stopped them, as you remember, on the interception the last time but yeah had an interception that was dropped in the end zone then they fumbled the football there uh, picked up by the Panthers and that put them in the position they were in weren't able to capitalize on that unfortunately yeah. that's Pennington Gage Pennington senior getting some snaps out there and running back picking up about eight yards on that one. Yeah, Juwan Tolson there on the tackle for the Panthers out of the strong safety position coming up in run support. Jackson Jones coming in for the Yellow Jackets at the fullback position. And he gets the ball going straight up the middle. He's Still. got some running room inside the five-yard line. Ian Ashworth eventually brings him down there on the five-yard line, but big run. They've had one, two, three, four, five, six different people running the football here this afternoon. Uh, you've heard of the two-headed monster, but I'm not sure if I've heard of the six. Man. But they've got them. Uh, it, I think we, it's – we joke about the Jimmys and the Joes and the X's yeah. and the O's, and they got the Jimmys and they got the Joes. Like something from Revelation. <laughs> Jackson Jones again, giving it to him. He's going to try to finish it off. Ends up being about two yards shy, but actually picking up about three. Yeah, just shy of the touchdown there. Going to be second and goal on the two-yard line for the Yellow Jackets. We'll see what personnel they've got in. Hard to predict here these days. You, you really do have to take a look at who's coming off the sideline. But uh, big running back Nick Hale is in the game. Would not be shocked if he gets the handoff here. He is really tough to stop with less than two yards. So we'll see if Campanella calls his number. And he gets the ball, no surprise here. Yeah, in for the touchdown. He just dozes on Ooh. through. Big hole, offensive line's been doing great for Randolph Macon all afternoon here. Uh, massive holes for the running backs. And you'll see here on the handoff, he, it, it is right there. Boom. Left tackle pulls, gets him out of there, and it's wide open. Touchdown, Nick Hale. It's his sixth rush of the afternoon, second touchdown of the game for that young man. Out for the PAT, and it's up, and it's good. Randolph Macon leading 21 to nothing over the Firm Panthers. You're watching Panther football here on Cable 12. Sometimes, through no fault of your own, you need an attorney, a successful, experienced attorney who'll fight for you and protect your rights. Will Davis at the Davis Law Firm is that attorney. Will's an experienced Virginia trial lawyer in Roanoke, Franklin County, and beyond. He won't feel like you're on an assembly line, and he won't settle your case to avoid a trial. He will pursue the compensation and insurance settlement you deserve. For compassionate and aggressive representation, contact the Davis Law Firm. Experience. Driven. Results. Doyle Custom Embroidery is your family-owned, faith-based choice for custom embroidery, screen printing, and heat printing right here in Franklin County. If you want to improve your business's image, promote your event, or just create your own custom product, then Doyle Custom Embroidery is your choice. We can embroider anything that will hold a stitch. Check out our huge selection of quality products at dcestore.com. And remember, we'll keep you in stitches. I'll be a busy guy today kicking off. 
will be kicking off to Aguilar and Lee deep, standing on their five-yard line. And this one's going to be a fair catch. Aguilar running into the end zone. It'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. Panthers will take over there. Yeah, so far offense for Farum Carr is two for three through the air. 19 yards, Bowers receiving. He's had the two receptions for the Panthers for 19 yards. Uh, he's also uh, carried the football. Jalen Lee, 13 yards on the ground, and Carr with 15 yards on the ground. Uh, offense, they, they, they've had a, a, a few decent plays here where they've picked up positive yardage, but the penalties have really hurt them so far in the first half. Carr finding a receiver out here inside the yeah, they're gonna 35. Say, they're gonna say he got that one in and uh, was able to keep his feet in as he brought that reception. You'll see here on the replay. Yeah, that's Aguilar. Yeah, Carr hits him perfectly just where he could catch the football and uh, had, had no room to turn it upfield, but didn't need it. So good play there. Uh, gonna bring up second and one after a nine yard reception. Carr calling the signals, but Moford Woodruff in motion, excuse me. Lee getting out over the first down marker plus inside the 39 yard line, first down and 10. It'll be a dual custom embroidery, first and 10. Yeah, good, good first down. That was actually Bowers there in the backfield oh, instead of Lee. Yeah. Yes. So they, they've uh, handed the ball to Bowers a couple times here right. so far this afternoon. Going to multi-purpose back there. A lot, saw a lot of resemblance there in that uh, east to west movement of Bowers. Carr going to take it himself out over the 45 to the 46 yard line. Yeah, design run there for the quarterback and he does a good job of, of picking up around seven yards there for the Panthers. We've seen him be able to use his legs there on the ground to, to pick up uh, some yardage and uh, that, that's gonna open some things up through the pass game. Well, the more they key on that is, hey, that opens up uh, the, the play action fake and uh, yeah, that's where the home run ball comes in. Yeah, we mentioned that a little earlier in the, in the pregame. Uh, that it may be just a little bit of a weakness in the this yellow jacket defense would be pass coverage. Yeah, they haven't had to go for it here. No, that's right. T.J. James brings uh, brings him down after the first down, but yeah, wouldn't be shocked to see a play action fake here uh, sometime soon to Marquise Woodruff. He, he tends to be one they look for the home run ball to. Um, so we'll see here in the next. Uh, you set that up over the next first down or two and we'll we'll see how it goes and another yeah <laughs> we've got three yellow jackets dead here in the booth uh, can count that yellow jacket for it hatched but it did finally get it over the 40 yard line hey, first and 10 11 yard gain there and gonna move the sticks again so Carr taking it on himself to get this little Opening up around the outside. Yeah. It's a first down and 10. That'll be a Angie McGee, first and 10. Franklin County home team realtors. Kate Jones gets a shoulder thrown in there and is able to slow him down. But had it not been for Kate, he had a lot of green in front of him. Lee off tackle. Getting out about eight yard gain on that play. Yeah, tripped up by Alex Biddle. It's going to bring up second and two. And tell you, this offensive line firing off the ball, this sequence, uh, providing good blocking for uh, Carr and for Lee. And doing a good job getting them moved out of the way up front. And uh, like you mentioned, Carr and Lee finding their way on the ground. They're going to hand the ball off. Too. Here's Lee trying to change directions, tripping up. No game. Yeah, going to be a loss of around one. Had nothing going. Going to bring up third and three. Third down three. Here for the Panthers. Look like the defensive line did a little pushing back on that offensive line. Got in the way of the runner. 
Yeah, we're, we're still in around two down territory. It'd be a stretch for Deaton here, but uh, yeah. not, not out of the question. Wind is fine, not a big windy day, so we'll see what they're able to pick up. Lee off tackle. Down to about the 30-yard line, but I still think he's shy about a half a yard. Yeah, going to be a little bit shy, and uh, I do think they're going to see the offense stay out on the field. One of the, the calls that's been really popular at the next level after this is what they refer to uh, as the tush push in, uh, oh, yeah. in Philadelphia. We would just call that the wedge where I come from, but, <laughs> hey, you, you get under center and, and you push it for all you got. I'm not sure we're going to see an under center play by Farum here this afternoon, but that's what that's designed for, and, and here we go. Well, I think the wedge, I've always saw that you did a lot of pulling on a wedge, but that car is making it on his own, not having to no any help except uh, the home being opened up for him. That's first down and 10. That is American National Bank first down. Yeah, plenty of, plenty of room there to get that first down, and Farum continues to just methodically march down the field. Got three minutes left to go here in the first half for Farum to go ahead and put some points up on the board. Car handing off to Bowers. Bowers breaking it outside. Got a flag. Yeah, unfortunately, this has been another one of those pesky yeah, penalties. We've seen a, a few too many of those here so far in the game for the Ferrum Panthers. Not what they're looking for. It, it's really slowed the offense down. Uh, when they need it the most, they tend to get the penalty instead of the big play. And that, that's going to be their fourth flag of the day already here in the first half. And uh, probably, I think, maybe their second or third holding call. Yeah, and it just comes at the worst time for the Panthers. Under three minutes left here. In this half, Panthers yet to crack the ice. Yellow Jackets up 21 to nothing. Panthers in motion. Carr taking it outside off tackle. Quick play there by a defender. That's, uh, that's your tackle that quick tackle we saw him run down early yeah pretty pretty speedy tackler there wade grubbs uh, defensive tackle running down the line not sure if he missed a read or, or not up front but his pitch man was was standing there uh looking for the football and, and just just didn't get it for whatever reason um and so that's going to bring up second and 20 for the panthers Car calling the signals. Back to pass, finding his receiver. Aguilar not able to get under that one. A little bit underthrown by Carr. Well, if you, you'll see here if we get a replay, uh, get a stumble on this, and it really affects his ability to haul the play in. So he plants and stumbles right there, and that throws everything off. Didn't really give him a chance to make a football play on an underthrown football, and the combination of those two affected his ability there to pick up some good yardage. Going to bring up third and 20. Looks like we are going to have a timeout here by Farum. It is 146 to go here in the first half. Bridge or, or my bad, uh, Randolph making 21. Farum nothing. We'll be right back. Watch Panther football here on Cable 12. Long ago, Carillion Clinic made a promise to be here every moment. That means the moment you need care, and every other moment too. Because by providing tools, support, and guidance to take charge of your health on your terms, we're helping you live better every day. Carillion Clinic is right here for you from moment one. Sometimes through no fault of your own, you need an attorney, a successful experienced attorney who'll fight for you and protect your rights. Will Davis at the Davis Law Firm is that attorney. Will's an experienced Virginia trial lawyer in Roanoke, Franklin County, and beyond. He won't feel like you're on an assembly line, and he won't settle your case to avoid a trial. He will pursue the compensation and insurance settlement you deserve. For compassionate and aggressive representation, contact the Davis Law Firm. Experience. Driven. Results. Third down into the garage. 
They're going deep forward, car back, looking for somebody open. Going to try to get some of it back himself. Maybe get Deaton in the field goal range. I don't think he is, but we'll see how much confidence they have. Be a long field goal for Deaton around a 51 yarder. Looks like they're going to leave the offense out there. Yeah, that's uh, that's pushing it right at the edge of. Uh, but it is a know, nice day, and it, he's got it, a strong leg, so you never know. Um, they're going to let that clock run down, take another timeout. It looks like here in Ferrum. Opportunity to think about this one a little bit longer, and we'll take a break while they're thinking. Watching Panther football here on Cable Twelve. Doyle Custom Embroidery is your family-owned, faith-based choice for custom embroidery, screen printing, and heat printing right here in Franklin County. If you want to improve your business's image, promote your event, or just create your own custom product, then Doyle Custom Embroidery is your choice. We can embroider anything that will hold a stitch. Check out our huge selection of quality products at dcestore.com. And remember, we'll keep you in stitches. Powering your home with propane has never been easier than when you work with Hall Propane. Imagine never running out of hot water with a tankless water heater, cooking like a pro on a gas range, or staying cozy with a propane log set, furnace, or heater. Then when it's time to cool off, Hall's HVAC techs keep your system running efficiently. Since 1959, Hall has been providing top-notch service at competitive prices. Live in comfort with Hall. Visit hallpropane.com or come see us on Highway 220 south of Rocky Mount. When it's time to celebrate the life. Deaton with a beautiful punt. Here you yeah. see him getting a leg on this one and look at the coverage yeah. down there. Great job covering that down on the two yard line. Couldn't draw that one up better myself, Mike. That's right. And you pretty good at drawing. So the, I wouldn't say that. The, the Yellow Jackets will be deep in their own territory on the two yard line with a lot of field to come back, uh, but has been done there with 51 seconds. It's going to take them a couple of big plays, but they're going to get the ball back at halftime. So uh, they would love to get something out of this, even if it's a field goal. Campanelli standing in his end zone. Takes his snap, he's back. Looking for somebody deep all day long. Got about a week. Week and a half there to throw the football and has to get, throw it away. Everything covered up, not a lot of pressure there in the end zone. Really, hey. really good defensive back work yeah. back there by the Black Hats. 43 seconds left. Campanelli. Uh, Looking for somebody to break open just any minute, but uh, Panthers staying fast back there. He back, back again, looking for something to come open. He's breaking loose. He's going to toss that one up here in the home stands. Yeah, keep your head head up here if you're uh, in the stands at Ferrum. He's, he's thrown two in the same direction. Got 36 seconds left. Maybe he'll get another one. Maybe there's somebody with a yellow jacket uh, uniform up in here somewhere you're looking at. <laughs> there's an open guy. Yeah, a couple scores from around the ODAC. Uh, battle of the five and threes, Hampton, Sydney, and Shenandoah. They're at Hampton, Sydney today. 16 to three, Hampton, Sydney right mm. now. Uh, Washington and Lee's playing Bridgewater. Both of those teams are six and two, and they're at Washington and Lee, 24 to seven, Washington and Lee at the half. Campanelli handed it off up the middle, getting plenty of room here for first and 10. That's the, the big guy, Nick Hale, Hale senior 5'8", 196, bowling ball. Yeah, Randolph Macon going to go ahead and call a timeout here with 29 seconds left to go in the first half. They're, they're currently leading 21 to nothing here in Farrell. And we'll be right back. Of someone special, turn to Connor Bowman Funeral Home. With two full-service facilities, we offer professional care and service to our community. 100% owned and operated, offering you the traditional historical Lynch, Connor, Bowman, and Franklin County's most modern and newest facility on 220 North. We can assist you with pre-arranged funerals, and we house an on-site crematory. 
We can come to your home to make arrangements and pre-arrangements. We offer the release of one white dove, one memorial video, and video of the service, if held, in one of our chapels at no cost to you. Connor Bowman Funeral Home, Rocky Mount, and 220 North. Okay, let's see if we can call some of these guys some names. <laughs> <laughs> the correct ones, preferably. Yeah, the correct ones, yeah. Campanelli back after first and ten. Looking to find somebody open. Got a man open. Oh, what, what a what catch. A, my goodness, what a football catch. play. Number six, that is Martin. Yeah, Colin Martin wow. there was elevated on the depth chart before the game. and Got a timeout, Farum. That was uh, a little quick timeout that actually worked to the the benefit of the Yellow Jackets. The official Panther merchandise trailer is open at the top of the stadium through the end of the game. 21 seconds left to go here in the first half, and as we, we joked a little bit last night, ran into a similar situation. Longest minute in football uh, right before the end of the first half sometimes. and uh, Saw some great clock management last night here in the local high school football game between Franklin County and Lord Botetod, and uh, they were able to squeeze some points out there at the end of the first half, and uh, good coaching can go a long ways with 21 seconds as you get across the field here. We'll see no timeouts left for Randolph Macon. Uh, Coach Adams had two, just used one with 21 seconds left. We'll we'll see uh, if, if the adjustment he makes here pays off. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, you know, got a couple of options. I'll, uh, uh, the junior 6'2", 193, got a good leg out there. We'll see if he gets a chance to try to put three more up on the board for the Yellow Jackets. But Campanelli right now running the show at the quarterback. He's back to pass and plenty of time. They're not rushing him, finding him right inside the 15-yard uh, line and breaking it out, uh, taking it out of bounds to stop the clock. First down and 10. Not sure if we'll have the replay here, but he found a, a piece of grass with nobody else standing in. And see, he slides there right in behind the coverage um, just off camera. There he is standing. He doesn't have anybody within 10 yards of him until they see the ball thrown. And at that point, it's too late. It's going to be first and 10 on around the, what, the 13-yard line. Yeah, Campanelli back. Good defensive play there. Yeah, Tyree Barton there in coverage, and he he was all over that one. Uh, was able to get the hand in, and don't see a flag anywhere, and just that's just good coverage on defense. Absolutely. When you don't see the yellow come out, you've done a good job. Yeah, you'll see him slide in here. Yeah, and, good quick you know, movement. No jersey pulling or anything like that. Just gets that arm in there and breaks it up. None to mention. <laughs> Campanelli. Calling the signal, still another opportunity here. Gonna try to put it in for a touchdown, and he does. What a reception back there again. As time expires, he hauls it in. There's not a second left on the clock here, and uh, you'll see here on the replay, it, it is just a ball that only he can catch. Yeah. Threads perfect the pass. needle, perfect pass. They've done that in practice a time or two, I've got a feeling. And That's to Cullen Martin, number six. 27 points up on the board here going for the point after attempt. Wow. Getting ready for the snap. It's down and it's up and it's plenty good. Scores 28 to nothing here at halftime. We'll be back with the second half. More action. Panther football right after this. Long ago, Carillion Clinic made a promise to be here every moment. That means the moment you need care and every other moment too. Because by providing tools, support, and guidance to take charge of your health on your terms, we're helping you live better every day. Carillion Clinic is right here for you from moment one. Sometimes through no fault of your own, you need an attorney a successful, experienced attorney who'll fight for you and protect your rights. Will Davis at the Davis Law Firm is that attorney. 
Will's an experienced Virginia trial lawyer in Roanoke, Franklin County, and beyond. He won't feel like you're on an assembly line, and he won't settle your case to avoid a trial. He will pursue the compensation and insurance settlement you deserve. For compassionate and aggressive representation, contact the Davis Law Firm. Experience. Driven. Results. introduce you to the Farron College Sports Hall of Fame class of 2023. Six former athletes make up this year's class. Our first Hall of Fame inductee is Melissa Buchanan Kraft from the class of 2001 in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Melissa played women's basketball and volleyball for four years at Farron from 1998 to 2001. She is the first basketball player in school history to reach 1,000 career points and 1,000 career rebounds and earned a pair of all-conference and all-state honors. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome former, excuse me, fair sport Hall of Famer, Melissa Buchanan Kraft. Our next Hall of Fame inductee is Tanisha Durham from the class of 2004. Tanisha lives in Roanoke, Virginia, and played women's basketball for four years at Farrow from 2000 to 2004. Tanisha was a three-time all-conference selection is currently fourth on Farron's all-time scoring list with 1,497 career points. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Farron Sports Hall of Famer, Tanisha Durham. <laughs> Our next Hall of Fame inductee is Andre Levitsy from the class of 1989 in Rocky Mount, Virginia. Andre played basketball for three years at Farron from 1987 to 89. Andre earned all-conference honors in 1989 and was a member of the 1988-89 team that scored a school record 2,634-35 season points. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Farron Sports Hall of Famer Andre Levesey. 
Our next Hall of Fame inductee is Melvin Martin from the class of 1975 in Martinsville, Virginia. His son, Floyd Martin, represents him today. Melvin played football and ran track for two years at Ferrum from 1975 to 76. After leaving Ferrum, he went on to play football for two years at William & Mary, where he earned All-State and All-Region in 1978. After leaving William & Mary, he attended preseason camp with the Detroit Lions and the CFL Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ferrum Sports Hall of Famer Melvin Martin. Our next Hall of Fame inductee is Angela Thomas from the class of 1990 in Jonesville, Virginia. Unfortunately, Angela cannot be with us today. She played basketball, volleyball, and tennis at Farron from 1987 to 1990. She was Farron's salutatorian in 1990, graduating with the highest honors. Angela coached another Hall of Famer that you just met, Melissa Buchanan Kraft, in volleyball at Lee High School making this the first time a coach and player have been inducted into our Hall of Fame in the same year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ferrum Sports Hall of Famer, Angela Thomas. And our final Hall of Fame inductee this year is George Yancey from the class of 1967 in Gordonsville, Virginia. George played football for two years at Ferrum from 1966 to 1967. He was a member of Farron's NJCAA National Runner-Up Team in 1966. He went on to play football at William & Mary in 1970. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Farron College Hall of Famer, George Yancey. Folks, let's hear it one more time for the Farron College Sports Hall of Fame class of 2023.
Field Commander Ryan Johnson, is your band ready? You may now take the field in performance.
Puts a huge quick statistic from the first half of play. Rushing leaders for the Randolph Macon in 41 yards is Nick Hale. And for the Panthers, Nathan Carr picked up 40. Leading passers, Drew Campanelli of the Yellow Jackets. 11 of 17, 225 yards. And for the Panthers, Nathan Carr is 3 of 5 for 20. Getting ready to, for second half action. Randolph Macon get the ball back here. They're leading 28 to nothing. After a lot of halftime action here. Deaton kicking off. He taking it at 15 yard line. Still on his feet. Yeah, got a little running room. Around midfield before eventually forced out of bounds. That's Jason Moore Jason taking Moore, that one back. Sophomore 5'11, 280. Back over midfield. Big first half of offense out of Randolph making 14 first downs, 128 yards on the ground, averaging nine yards a carry. 11 receptions, 225 yards through the air. It was 11 for 17 passing the football there. Did have one turnover. 31 plays, 353 yards. 
12 minutes and 35 seconds of possession. Moving fairly quickly. Campanelli back. Ooh, good defensive play there. Good time, apparently. Yeah, Tyree Barton in That's on the, the coverage there. And Jason Moore. A little shaken up at the end of the play. You're going to see the athletic trainer coming on out to the field. It's going to be an official timeout, Mike. Yeah, I think the uh, injury there was when he stretched out to try to get to that ball. Good, uh, good defensive play there. His teammates going to help him off. I think he's probably okay. Maybe a pull muscle. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one coming right out of halftime to have to cover a big play. 1441 here, just starting the second half if you're just joining us. But Randolph Bacon been here right a, a, a while. 28 to nothing, they're up. Got the ball here at midfield. Campanelli handing off to Hale. Hale picking up about two and a half, maybe three yards on that one. Some defensive stats for Farum. From the first half, Ashworth seven total tackles, Barton five. A few guys with three, Smith, Ross, and Howard all three tackles there. Special teams, kicker Seth Deaton, one kickoff for 53 yards, had five punts, averaging 43.6. Had that really big uh, punt there that had a, a Ferrum Panther bounce for 62 yards. Uh, I'd say that's a season long. I don't would have that noted, but yeah, 62 yards, hard to beat that one. Sure is. Campanella back, find his receiver. That's Martin. That's Colin Martin caught that big game. pass, long pass early in the first half. Got another one here, going to be a first and 10. For the Yellow Jackets, going to be spotted at the 30-yard line. Yeah, his fourth reception of the day already, as you mentioned, has one touchdown through the air during the first half. I think that was that 27-yard reception mm -hmm. for a touchdown. Uh, Campanella been pretty efficient through the air. Campanella looking for a receiver. He's going to pull it down and run, get about five yards. Yeah, lost the ball on the slide, but I think it'd probably be ruled after the slide started, and that's one of those that uh, as soon as he touches the ground, the, the, ball is, the ball is dead. You'll see he uh, goes ahead and pulls it, scrambles here, starts the slide, and right there it's yeah, an he, official. Right he's there, down so. right there. So no fumble on the play. Going to pick up around four yards, bringing up second and seven instead of second and six on the scoreboard here for the Yellow Jackets. Campanella calling the signals, Hale in the backfield with him. And he hands off to Hale. Hale looking for a little running space, could not find it. Yeah, the four. Black hats. Four Panther Black Hats on the football there. If I only named one, it'd be leaving the other three out. So we'll we'll leave it there. But hey, you see them all over the football. Hale had no running room. Very patient runner there, but nothing ever developed up front. That offensive line's been doing a good job all afternoon to get those holes open. But uh, a lot of Panther Black Hats flying to the football right there. And, it's going to be third and five. A lot of patient running there as well on defense. A lot of patient right. holding their position. Hale, uh, I'm sorry, that's not Hale. That's uh, Clark on the carry, and he's going to get the first down and 10. Yeah, Jameson Hackett there on the stop for Farum. It's going to be a first down. That's a Matty Law Firm, first down and 10. For Randolph making here. Going to be just inside red zone territory now. Things get a little tighter on this end of the field. Uh, we, we've seen the coverage uh, tighten up a little bit, and we'll see if Campanella can find his receivers. Campanella handing off to Clark. Clark finding running room outside. Good blocking out there by the tackles. Sealing Clark off that end, end opening up the outside for Clark to break it loose. Ian Ashworth eventually able to bring him on down. 
Not after a big run, though. The chains are going to drop, and it's going to be first and goal on the five-yard line. So Doyle Custom Embroidery, first down and 10. Yellow Jackets knocking on the door. Clark breaking it into the end zone. Yeah, good patience there, sees the hole open up, turns it up inside and untouched five yards for the touchdown. Gonna have 34 on the scoreboard, looking for a point after attempt right here. Oh, another opportunity here for to put up the 35th point on the board for the Yellow Jackets. Snap is back, it's down, and it's up and plenty good. Scores 35 to nothing, Randolph Macon on top. Watching Panther football right here on Cable 12. Doyle Custom Embroidery is your family-owned, faith-based choice for custom embroidery, screen printing, and heat printing right here in Franklin County. If you want to improve your business's image, promote your event, or just create your own custom product, then Doyle Custom Embroidery is your choice. We can embroider anything that will hold a stitch. Check out our huge selection of quality products at dcestore.com. And remember, we'll keep you in stitches. Long ago, Carillion Clinic made a promise to be here every moment. That means the moment you need care, and every other moment too. Because by providing tools, support, and guidance to take charge of your health on your terms, we're helping you live better every day. Carillion Clinic is right here for you from moment one. Lee and Aguilar are back deep to receive Isles kickoff. This one's deep. Aguilar taking it on the one yard line, getting back out to the 15 yard line. Mm. Being stopped there quickly, rudely yeah. awakened. Big hit there, number 39 on defense, Randolph Macon. It's gonna be Christian Daniel. Christian listed as a freshman. Randolph making bright future, big hit. Good coverage there by the kickoff team. Going to bring up first and 10 on the 18-yard line for the Panthers, and that 25 looks a little better when you're starting on 18. Yeah. Carr back to take the snap on about the 13-yard line, giving it off to Lee. Lee getting up over the 20 yard line. Pick up of about three yards on that one. Be second down and seven, maybe eight. Yeah, at times we, we've seen uh, some pretty good drives put together. Um, Shoot themselves in the foot, <laughs> most of those. They will come up yeah. with a yellow flag here and there at the most inopportune time. Yeah, four penalties on the, the afternoon, 30 yards there. But those 30 yards have been really important ones that, that uh, we're going to see another one. I think it's going to be on the defense here. They let the play continue. Free play there, going to be a gain of around nine yards. Kyle Bowers on the reception, but we'll see what this holds, if it holds up. Yeah, I think you're going to see offsides on the defense. So that should stand. I would think they would take the play. Well, we got a little technical difficulty. We just take hand signals. We'll be just fine. He needs those microphones that Joe Dirt had. He said they don't take no feedback. There you go. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to take that play instead, I guess. Anyway, it'll be second down and three. <laughs> it took a while to, for that one to develop, didn't yes, it, Yes, it did. It sure did. <laughs> kept, them, kept everybody, uh, including us, guessing. I hope the clock won't run in while it was done. <laughs> Car back to pass. Pulling it down. Going to try to get something on the ground. Got nothing going there. Brought down by Jackson Curry. 
and company. It'll be third down and about two for first down. Curry spelled a little different here. You 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 much into curry or the the spicy chicken? No, no, not no into that. I'm not much into that. That's um, uh, southern fried. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah, yeah, grease. <laughs> I need a little grease in my life. That's my seasoning. Yeah, that's it's why I grease. drink so much coffee. There you go. Keeps that grease. Oh, car stopped mm. short of the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Needed a big push there to get the first down. Unfortunately, dropped a yard short behind the line of scrimmage, bringing up fourth and four, and Seth Deaton out on the field for the punt. Deaton really been doing his part today of uh, pinning these yellow jackets. Going to be hard to do right here. Uh, got the yellow jacket of choice. That's Marinella. Standing on the 40-yard line. Yeah, five punts today, averaging 43.6 yards. Nelly waving this one off. He'll take it where it lands. And that is on the 29-yard line. Oh, the 29 Yellow Jackets line. take over there first and 10. They've made quick, efficient work on offense here their last few drives. And Campanella, is, uh, he's really done a number quarterback rating today of 205.3 on the QBR. That is, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, 243 yards through the air, two touchdowns along with 39. As we mentioned in the pregame show, very well-balanced attack here. Absolutely. Campanella. Not able to connect with his receiver out there. Yeah, just just behind, just behind his man. Looked like that was Chase Blaker and out in coverage there in the cornerback position. I think his Hammersley was the intended receiver, sophomore out there with a chance to get a few snaps under his belt. And he's yet to haul one in today, trying to get his name on the stat sheet. Do see them rotating a few different players in that we didn't see in the first half here. Got Johnson there breaking it off tackle, picking up about five, maybe going as far as six yards. Going to be a third down and four, a three. Johnson yeah, they rotate a lot of players in and out, and the offensive line just keeps uh, doing what they do, opening up big holes. And disciplined football for Randolph Macon here this afternoon. They're doing a great job keeping a hold of that football. They do have one turnover on the day, but um, three penalties, 25 yards for them. It's not been as timely, unfortunately, uh, if you're a Farron Panther fan. This is Johnson again, picking up enough for the first down. A little frustrations working out there. Well, late whistle uh, kind of affects that. You know, the, the progress had stopped. Whistle doesn't get blown. So at that point, uh, hunting season's on. Free, free, yeah. <laughs> free shot. Yeah. Oh, thanks. You know, that's that. Mr. Strike. You play to the whistle. They didn't hear the whistle. And, and I can't say that I fault anybody for going ahead and finishing the playoff. And. No flags well, they there. They didn't either. So yeah, hey, yeah, we didn't get any flags, so that means the officials Mr. Didn't Stripe, take. he was pleased with it. That's so. right. Campanella calling the signals for the Yellow Jackets. Johnson again. They're working him today. Got a loose ball. Yeah, great job there. Hunter Canaday makes the initial contact. Number seven. And then Tyree Barton on the strip drill gets the football. Great fumble recovery or strip, whatever we'll call it. You see there, Canaday's got him. The ball pops loose. Tyree Barton recovers, falls right into his hands, and he's across midfield and down to around the 25 yard line. So the best opportunity all day that uh, Farham has had. Uh, they're going to need to capitalize on this. To no yellow flags. I'm oh, yeah. sure they're wishing for. <laughs> this is Lee looking through the middle, picking up <clears throat> about three. 
on that one. Yeah, gonna mark him for a gain of four on the play. Great field position yeah. after that, that fumble recovery. Return down to the 25 yard line. Altus in there running the Black Hats offense. Yeah, running the option there, made his read, decided to keep it, gets back up to the line of original line of scrimmage there for no gain. Going to bring up third and five. Defensive line uh, really clamped down up the middle there in that 4-3 base defense of Randolph-Macon. This um, Chase Altus is a freshman, 6'4", 220. He's got a good look downfield. Yeah, I was going to say, you look out there, and, and uh, the height is, is very obvious out on the field. Altus finding his receiver out here in the flats. That's Woodruff. Woodruff, one of the favorite targets of the Black Hats. Going to be about a yard and a half shy of a first down. This is a big fourth down. Just short of the first down. Now Farum uh, has been has gone for it once on fourth down here today already and, and got it. So this is going to be their second fourth down conversion attempt to try to go two for two on fourth down. Definitely within range of, of kicker Seth Deaton, but down 35 here. Very Woodruff again. Maybe. No, it doesn't look like it. That is uh, number zero. Is that Bratcher? E. Bratcher. Yeah, tie the tight end. That play was good for Finally Aaron. using the tight end. Love to see that. That is uh, not used as much these days. Oh, got a little bit of excitement going on there on the line of scrimmage we'll see who jumped first both teams are pointing at each other and you know it's really hard to believe that the panthers would uh do that after as many times as they've given up opportunity yeah they did not so they call that on randolph macon there and it's going to be one that actually goes in the favor of the Panthers here. A lot of those uh, inopportune penalties have been at their expense here this afternoon. So first and goal on the five-yard line and best opportunity they've seen all, all day today. Woodruff in motion, handed it to Lee up the middle, and he's in the end zone, breaking the ice for the Panthers. Yeah, great job there. Offensive line opens up a, a big hole. He jumps right through it here. You'll see on the replay, brings a man in motion up front. Offensive line, look at that hole, Mike. Wow. Yeah, does a great job. Uh, I think I could have run through yeah. that. <laughs> One would hope. <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to bring uh, the field goal extra point team out. Seth Deaton getting a chance to do the PAT attempt. We see Braxton Hughes out there holding the football. Yeah, it's a good sign. And he's going to take it in for the two-point conversion. Yeah, look at that. Great job there, Braxton. And um, hey, good to see that. Yeah, good to see him healthy enough on senior day to go ahead and get that two-point conversion. See, right. he's got the knee brace on there, been struggling through that injury, was on crutches a couple weeks ago here at home, and uh, he, he did a great job up until that point. And good to see that young man getting on the end zone on senior day. Braxton's been a very stable figure in this offense all year long. Good to see him come back and, and uh, get that score. Yeah, good, good transfer there from Richmond here, graduate student at Ferrum College, and uh, he's done a great job. Uh, this young offense being senior leadership that's well needed out there on the field. A lot of coaching within the coaching staff right that's there. That's right, brings uh, a lot to the table. Absolutely, 35 to eight, Panthers. Finally breaking the ice, getting ready to kick off 
to the Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets with a lot of folks getting to play today. Really working us on here on these rosters. That's right. Yeah. Hey, we've got uh, an update, ODAC update. Hampton, Sydney, and Shenandoah are going into overtime, Whoa. tied up at 19. Both teams five and three, battling for position there in the ODAC standing. So, a uh, big game there at Hampton, Sydney, Washington, and Lee has beat Bridgewater 31 to seven, and Guilford is currently down 21 to 13 against Averett. Uh, Ferrum faces Averett next week in Danville for the last game of the season. This is Thompson taking it on the 11-yard line. Finding some running room. Over to 40, over to 50, back over to 40 and out of bounds. Yeah, I had one man left to go and that was Tyree Barton and Tyree gets him forced out of bounds. Big return. Ricky, Ricky Thompson, senior, getting an opportunity to take some snaps there. Big first and 10. You can pin the Yellow Jackets back only so long. They do not stay back there long. That's right. Buzzing all over the field. Buzzing all over the field. Had to get that one. Yeah, they'll sting you on those, getting those openings. They hit them quickly. Hand off up the middle. That's Chapman taking that one up the middle. Hunter Canada and Ian Ashworth there for the tackle for the Ferrum Panthers. Ashworth is 10th of the day. Hutching running the offense here for the Yellow Jackets. He's a senior, 5'11", 180. Hutchin taking the snap. That's Chapman. Picking up almost Hunter enough. Chapman yes, it is enough for the first down. Jameson Hackett and Fuller Howard in on the tackle there. And, and yeah, Mike, you're, you're seeing them rotate quite a few guys on offense. Uh, they're 8 0, looking to go 9 0, currently ninth team in the country right now in Division Three football and in the coaches' poll. So uh, good to get everybody some experience before they're looking to head into the playoffs. And uh, that's only going to pay dividends down the stretch for this Randolph Macon team. Well, that's how you get your depth on your uh, bench. Hutchin back to pass, finds a receiver out here. That's uh, Martin again. Martin been in on several of those connections with uh, Campanella. Yeah, Chase Blaker brings Martin down and keeps your uh, rotating these guys in, not only gives them experience, but keeps them fresh too. Less risk of injury and spend less time in the athletic training room, more time on the practice field and in the weight room. And uh, that only bodes for positive things in the postseason. And this is unless a team you're, that- Unless you're a defensive lineman, and then <laughs> you, you you really catch it. That's Those right. fresh legs coming in. Yep. Yeah. Hutchin taking the snap. Handing off Chapman again. Yeah, just across the uh, first down marker there, and that's going to be stopped by Fuller Howard eventually, but the chains are moving closer to the red zone, going to find themselves on the 23-yard line. Pennington coming in, bringing the play. Woolridge take going out of the game for the – Yellow Jackets. Yeah, Yellow Jackets currently have 200 yards on the ground, 250 through the air. Big day of offense here. Pennington takes his handoff, gets yeah. it down inside the 21-yard line. Stopped very quickly by Fuller Howard. He filled that Pennington gap Pennington nicely, Pennington. and you'll see Four here on the replay, inside. does a good job. Also on that tackle, Ian right there he is. Boom, makes the stop and down, two yards, and it's going to bring up a second down. Pennington, another one of those seniors for the Yellow Jackets. Closing in on the end of the third quarter here, as you saw on the scoreboard. Ticking down, 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. 
Hutchin calling the signals. Oh, Untouched. Chapman breaking it loose up the middle for a big oh, touchdown. 21-yard touchdown oh, here. Touchdown. 20. 22 seconds left yeah. here in the third quarter, making the best of each one of those. There you see it on the replay. Wide open mm -hmm. hole. Nobody else left at home, and there he is. Touchdown. Good job for that young man. But seeing that offensive line just go to work all day long, making holes, and uh, it's, it's really been a, a tough afternoon here for the Farron Panther defense. And uh, we knew they had a tall order looking at the, the stat sheet and the who's played who and then uh, what they've been doing. And they've run into a buzzsaw here last game at home on the season. I'll make it 42 to 8. Yellow Jackets leading. We'll be right back. You're watching Panther football here on Cable 12. Sometimes, through no fault of your own, you need an attorney, a successful, experienced attorney who will fight for you and protect your rights. Will Davis at the Davis Law Firm is that attorney. Will's an experienced Virginia trial lawyer in Roanoke, Franklin County, and beyond. He won't feel like you're on an assembly line, and he won't settle your case to avoid a trial. He will pursue the compensation and insurance settlement you deserve. For compassionate and aggressive representation, contact the Davis Law Firm. Experience. Driven. Results. Powering your home with propane has never been easier than when you work with Hall Propane. Imagine never running out of hot water with a tankless water heater, cooking like a pro on a gas range, or staying cozy with a propane log set, furnace, or heater. Then when it's time to cool off, Hall's HVAC techs keep your system running efficiently. Since 1959, Hall has been providing top-notch service at competitive prices. Live in comfort with Hall. Visit hallpropane.com or come see us on Highway 220 south of Rocky Mount. Aguilar and Lee deep back on the five yard line to the re receive Isles kick. He's going to call for a fair catch. That'll bring him out to the 25 yard line. Panthers will take over first and 10 right there. Yeah, been well covered today on kickoff return. Not much going, so smart move. Go ahead and start it on the 25 yard line. Been able to move the football a little bit here lately. Last drive uh, did have a short field, but six plays, 25 yards, two and a half minutes for a touchdown, and Farron was able to put that one together. And uh, with the, these young players they've got on offense, you want to get as much experience here down the stretch as you can, get some momentum going into the offseason, get them excited. That gets them in the weight room quickly and uh, in the spring ball ready to go. Alters back to pass, finding his op man open out here. It's going to be number six, Mosby. Yeah, Mosby bringing that one down. Going to be a first down and ten for the Panthers. Showing Gerard, Gerard Mosby, Mosby there. That's right. Angie first McGee, down. first and ten. Franklin County's home team realtor. Got a timeout. Quarters over. Yeah, had to be a good reason to stop it. <laughs> we're going to switch sides of the field while we're at it. <laughs> we'll be right back. You're watching Panther football right here on Cable 12. Sometimes, through no fault of your own, you need an attorney, a successful, experienced attorney who will fight for you and protect your rights. Will Davis at the Davis Law Firm is that attorney. Will's an experienced Virginia trial lawyer in Roanoke, Franklin County, and beyond. He won't feel like you're on an assembly line, and he won't settle your case to avoid a trial. He will pursue the compensation and insurance settlement you deserve. For compassionate and aggressive representation, contact the Davis Law Firm. Experience driven results. Powering your home with propane has never been easier than when you work with Hall Propane. Imagine never running out of hot water with a tankless water heater, cooking like a pro on a gas range, or staying cozy with a propane log set, furnace, or heater. Then when it's time to cool off, Hall's HVAC techs keep your system running efficiently. Since 1959, Hall has been providing top-notch service at competitive prices. Live in comfort with Hall. Visit hallpropane.com or come see us on Highway 220 south of Rocky Mount. Alter's calling the signals, handing off to Lee up the middle. Pretty good hole up there. Ended up on about the 43-yard line. Yeah, did a good job there coming out of uh, the quarter change. Going to bring up second and four here. 
Altus back to pass, got a man wide open. Beautiful connection. Yeah, I was wondering where we were gonna see that play action fake and wasn't Woodruff as we had called earlier, but that's Mosby there on the other end of it, Mike. I'll tell you, just a beautiful time pass play. Mosby reaching out at the last minute, dragging that one in. Panthers down on the seven yard line, knocking on the door here. They list Mosby as a senior, six foot one, 220 pounds out of Chesterfield, Virginia. Doing a good job here this afternoon. Yeah, Jalen Lee, Lee working in inside Drake the five yard Curry. line to about the three right yard line. He's second down and goal. Mosby's got three receptions for 70 yards here this afternoon, long of 52 right there on that one. Altus calling the signals, Lee in the backfield, Lee gets it, pushing his way very yeah. close to a Still touchdown. Going, man. They're gonna mark it down inside the one yard line. Be third down and less than one. Going to get a good replay here to see. He just kept driving and. Yeah, looks right. like he's plenty of room into the end zone from that angle, but you know. We don't do the blind gas we commercial. Just, on no, this one, do we, we? do no. Yeah, no, it's a, but it could be a good opportunity. That's Lee. okay, gonna get it Make on it that it. one. Yeah. yeah. Lee finally being. Persistent, getting back in there and scoring that one for the Panthers. Great job there for Lee. The second touchdown of the afternoon on the ground. And future's bright for that young man, freshman out of Rocky Mount, Virginia. How many yards has he got today? Does it tell so that would have put him up to a 49 after that one, two touchdowns. A lot of potential there, good speed. Knows where those holes are. That's Seth Deaton, another junior, will be back next year, Lord willing. He's going to take this one, going to try to score the two, and he and gets got it. it. Yeah. At least we got some Panthers right in there. There's a, there's a guy with a strike. Uh, they're they're going to flag him for that one. Uh, probably a little excessive celebration, but why hey, not, young man? Do what you do. A <laughs> uh, little known fact, I had a good good opportunity to coach Seth back in the day. And uh, in high school, Seth was actually uh, one of the fastest kids on campus. Ah. And uh, you, you, if you let him get loose, uh, that, that kid can run. So, well, you can uh, see it there. Yeah, he's done a great job. I think he still holds the record for the 40-yard dash at Stanton River High School uh -huh. for punters and kickers. Pretty fast young man and shows his speed on the edge. Well, he's got a leg on him, too. And he's got a leg. That's right, yeah. Really not a bad thing, that's for sure. Good young man. His brother played here as well. Yeah. Uh, Chase Deaton. That. So, Deaton family history here. Runs deep. Runs deep at Ferrum. They are uh, Ferrum Panther Black Hats through and through. Ferrum is blessed to have kids like that. So. Good family. Panthers striking back here. Getting 16 up on the board. Score 42 16. I know. Could have not reminded you. That. <laughs> that was a big, big play there. Good offensive drive. As you tell me on Friday night, say something. It's a bad idea. I just stating the facts. Yeah, 16 points 16. is positive. You know, I could be uh, could be a skunk out there, but it's not. And no. like we mentioned, you know, you, you've got a young offense. You want those guys to grow, put them in positions to succeed. Um, if you can score some, get some momentum here at the end of the game uh, against a very good Randolph-Macon team, there's no moral victories in football as 
they say, but there are some things that you can take away that are positive. Yeah. One and, thing uh, would be not to have uh, penalties when you're on a uh, <laughs> uh, when you're doing a drive of about 20, 30 yards, and then you get a 15-yard penalty. Really does put a, a damper on. Playing a top 10 team in the country, yeah. you can't shoot yourself in the foot. Um, and, and, and they did that early in this game, and that set the tone for the entire first half. And it was really hard to bounce back from. They've done a good job here um, on offense in the second half, but a little bit too much, too late, and that's okay. They'll. Uh, what do, do you think Seth's going to try to make up at? No, he's just going to pooch it up out there inside the 40-yard line, back to 38-yard line where this yeah. one will be spotted. Pulling out all the stops here this afternoon in the special teams. Maybe catch them a little bit off guard there. It drops and you're able to pick it up. And you never know. But, hey, didn't pan out this time. Maybe next one. They do have Averett next week in Danville. Going to be a pretty competitive matchup. I would think so. Down there, you know, Averett is currently uh, in a battle with Guilford this afternoon um, at Guilford. And, and those are, are two teams on Farum's end of the standings. Um, so it would be interesting to see what comes of that game next next week in Danville. Averitt currently leading that 21 to 13. Hutchin back to pass, finding a man over the middle. You talk about threading the needle, wow. but they're going to say that it he did not haul that one in. It would uh, be interesting to see what the replay looks like because you talk about a pitch and catch, thread the needle opportunity. You'll see right here. Find it. action. Devontae Hill coming over the middle. And just not going to be able to catch enough of it. that one. But uh, the official was pretty close to the ball. So my guess is uh, that, that one Well, it really the doesn't ground. matter what it is. That's where it's at. That's right where it's there. at. That's yeah. where they put it. They're but not going to ask us for they, a replay really not, or our opinion. I, so. I really would doubt that yeah. if that were to happen. Tell them they're going to get what they paid for. Trips to the left. Hutchin handing off the up through the middle. That's Johnson. Yeah, tripped up and uh, eventually a gain of four there. Mitchell Johnson on the carry. Farham does have a player on the ground here. Going to wave. Going to be an injury timeout here. And we'll take one, too, while they attend to the injured player. Hope he's not injured long. You're watching Panther football here on Cable 20. When it's time to celebrate the life of someone special, turn to Connor Bowman Funeral Home. With two full-service facilities, we offer professional care and service to our community. 100% owned and operated, offering you the traditional historical Lynch, Connor, Bowman, and Franklin County's most modern and newest facility on 220 North. We can assist you with pre-arranged funerals, and we house an on-site crematory. We can come to your home to make arrangements and pre-arrangements. We offer the release of one white dove, one memorial video, and video of the service if held in one of our chapels at no cost to you. Connor Bowman Funeral Home, Rocky Mount, and 220 North. Third down and five. Hutchin taking the snap, looking for a receiver. Finding a man out here to about midfield. That is Hammersley being stopped just right on the first down marker looks like from this angle but I've been mistaken before they're not moving the got a flag down here got a personal foul hit to the head yeah calling a targeting there which is going to lead to an ejection Coach Adams going to ask for a little bit more of uh, explanation. They're not going to get one. Uh, players are pleading out there, and, and unfortunately, once they've made that call, you'll see here uh, on the replay, we'll see if we can get a, a better explanation of. Really a tough, uh, wow. tough play there. So it looked they, like a, show, a lot of shoulder pad to me, but what yeah. do I know? Yeah, I, I didn't see helmet to helmet or anything like that, but uh, Will, Harrison, Will Harrison, unfortunately, his day is over, and uh, penalty, I'm not sure what that means at this next level, week, if it's next week, week as well. It is, yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, that will end his season, and he, he is a uh, senior, Mike. So, yep. uh, unless, unless he's redshirted, he will be. 
Also have a flag on this play. Didn't whistle that one off, so more than likely on the defense, which would be an offsides call. We'll see what the line judge calls in. Actually, they're, they're calling that movement the in the backfield. Jackets. Yeah, on the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, Pennington got started a little bit early, looks like. That one will be called back. It'll be about first and 15. For the Yellow Jackets, and we're going to have a timeout, and we'll take one too. You're watching Not Panther out. football here on Cable 12. Yellow Jackets first down and 15. Hutchin taking the snap, looking for an open receiver, and he's found one. Getting down inside the 25 yard line. I think it's Devontae Hill, look like. Yeah, Julian Morgan and Terrence Scales there in hot pursuit. Took both of them to get him on down to the ground there, but it is going to move the chains. A score update out of a game that went into overtime from the ODAC. Hampton Sydney comes out on top over Shenandoah 26-25 in a super tight game of teams that came in 5-3. and three. So Hampton Sydney is going to move to 6-3. and three. Shenandoah drops down a spot in the standings for ODAC. Hutchin finding a receiver. That's Lloyd, Andrew Lloyd, the tight end. Number 41, breaking Lloyd. over the middle. Second picking up one. about nine yards on that one to be second down and one for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, a lot of names in the stat book this afternoon. They have spread the ball around, giving it to everybody. They don't have just one workhorse that you've got you've to defend. You've got uh, everybody over there that's not an offensive lineman could touch the football and get it. And catch it, that's yeah, right. Any given day. So, um, yeah, tough tough for a defense to have to game plan for something that's just got this many opportunities. Hutchin to Chapman. Chapman now over the 10 yard line. Will be a first and goal. Cameron Chapman on the carry. How about Ian Ashworth? First and goal with the ball on the 10-yard line. Angie McGee, Franklin County's home team. First down and 10. Yeah, they're up to eight. Eight players who have ran the football here this afternoon for the Yellow Jackets and almost as many through the air. Hutchin handed off to Chapman again. Picking up another four yards. Yeah, a lot of Ferrum Panthers there. <laughs> on the stop. Clock continues to tick, getting down around nine minutes left to go here in the game at Farron. Been a beautiful afternoon for football. Been senior day, Hall of Fame induction, a lot of things going on on campus here at Farron. Saw Dr. Martin out there before the game, getting everybody together for a picture. She's doing a fantastic job here at Farron. Absolutely. Uh, current president here. Uh, I'm not sure if they've taken that interim title off of her not, but uh, yeah, she's doing a fantastic job getting the word out about the Farron Panthers in the community. There's Chapman again, just shy of the five yard line and taken out there quickly. Cameron Chapman again on the carry. Hunter Kennedy making the stop for the Panthers. Result of the play. Senior Franklin County and Kennedy on the tackle. 
many has he got today? He's been well, had, busy. Well, he hadn't. Uh, his name's not been one that's been on the stat book a, a, a lot here this afternoon. Kennedy with four here uh, on the day. Ashworth has been super busy with 12. Howard, eight tackles. Barton and Callahan for six. Uh, Kennedy has one 15 tackle game, I think, if I remember correctly, this year. Yeah, they, that's one thing this offensive line has done a good job of today is uh, getting up to the next level and hats on linebackers and forcing the defensive backs to make the plays. When that happens, your running game is yeah. chunking some yards away because, uh, you know, ideally you want those uh, those linebackers filling gaps and making plays. Your defensive line, uh, they should be holding those offensive linemen up. And I think we've got a timeout here. That's right. Eight minutes left here. We'll be right back. You're watching Panther football here on Cable 12. Doyle Custom Embroidery is your family-owned, faith-based choice for custom embroidery, screen printing, and heat printing right here in Franklin County. If you want to improve your business's image, promote your event, or just create your own custom product, then Doyle Custom Embroidery is your choice. We can embroider anything that will hold a stitch. Check out our huge selection of quality products at dcestore.com. And remember, we'll keep you in stitches. Long ago, Carillion Clinic made a promise to be here every moment. That means the moment you need care, and every other moment too. Because by providing tools, support, and guidance to take charge of your health on your terms, we're helping you live better every day. Carillion Clinic is right here for you from moment one. That's in, whoop, I'm sorry, got the, got a new quarterback in there. That's new quarterback, Derek, the same old Brown. story. Yeah. <laughs> Comes in, gets him a TD handoff there. Yeah, going to put 48 on the scoreboard. For the Yellow Jackets, Panthers 16, field goal extra point team is out there for Randolph Macon. Dedrick Brown, a freshman out there for the Yellow Jackets. Point after attempt is up. Ty Bowman, Bowman knocking that one through. Randolph Macon extends their lead to 49 16. Jackets up 49-16. Watching Panther football here on Cable 12. Sometimes through no fault of your own, you need an attorney. A successful, experienced attorney who'll fight for you and protect your rights. Will Davis at the Davis Law Firm is that attorney. Will's an experienced Virginia trial lawyer in Roanoke, Franklin County, and beyond. You won't feel like you're on an assembly line and he won't settle your case to avoid a trial. He will pursue the compensation and insurance settlement you deserve. For compassionate and aggressive representation, contact the Davis Law Firm. Experience, driven, results. Powering your home with propane has never been easier than when you work with Hall Propane. Imagine never running out of hot water with a tankless water heater, cooking like a pro on a gas range, or staying cozy with a propane log set, furnace, or heater. Then when it's time to cool off, Hall's HVAC techs keep your system running efficiently. Since 1959, Hall has been providing top-notch service at competitive prices. Live in comfort with Hall. Visit hallpropane.com or come see us on Highway 220 south of Rocky Mount. Freshman Ty Bowman kicking it deep. Aguilar taking it on the six yard line. Ferrum College will take over their first and 10. Oh, they'll take over on the 25 yard line, excuse me. He did mark that with his <laughs> signal. Yeah, wait for the fair catch there. Yeah. We're looking for a positive. Randolph Macon uh, opponents have been averaging 10 points per game on them. Farum's at 16, so uh, you know they've already surpassed that. They get the football back, and they they have been able to move the ball last few drives. And it looks like we're going to have um, an official timeout, and they're going to 
I think Three, we just had to get an extra ball. football off of the field. Had two out there instead of one. That would be exciting, wouldn't it? I'm telling you. Altus finding the receiver out here around the 25-yard line. Yeah, not quite able to keep his feet. That's Caleb Holland on that catch. Drake Schaefer, initial contact that leads to, uh, to the end of the play there, only gets a yard through the air on that pass. Farham up to 101 yards, receiving 80 on the ground this afternoon. No interceptions. Altus. Oh, oh. Just losing it out of bounds. Had his feet in and hands on the ball, just not able to bring that one in this afternoon. Mosby there for the Panthers. Tough to see those zeros, eights, and sixes with the shirts bent there in the middle of them. But they, you're right, the way they Mosby. bunch up, yeah, yeah. It's, it's tough to distinguish some of those numbers. That... Altus back to pass. Mm. Defensive line collapsing on it. Yeah, oh, down right. by number 90, Zach Phillips. It's the first time this afternoon we've called his name. He's pretty fired up about making that play. It's going to bring up fourth and long, and the punt team is out on the field with six and a half minutes left to go here in the game. The yellow jacket back here on the 45-yard line. I think she's Marinella. He's taking a fair catch, backing up a yard and taking Brandon a fair catch. A fair catch. Yellow Jackets will be taking over Randolph with a at the 44-yard line. line. They're up 49 to 16 over the Ferrum Panthers. Yeah, a lot of offense here this afternoon for them. 26 first downs, 249 yards on the ground, 279 through the air. 16 for 25 passing, averaging 8.95 yards per play for the Yellow Jackets. They've had 26 minutes and 51 seconds under the time of possession. And big stat on third down, they've uh, converted seven of eight times on third down here this afternoon. So good display of offense here for them. They're, they're definitely clicking on all cylinders. Hutchin. In there, handing off, getting about uh, two yards on that. Mitchell Johnson on the carry. That is uh, handed off to Johnson. Very uh, balanced, you know, as, as they've run all year, you know, balanced passing, and, and uh, that is a planned thing. It has to be. Those coaches know that an offense runs smoother if you can get some semblance of a running game and a passing game together. Yeah, and down the stretch, once you get into the playoffs, that is tough to beat. You know, Absolutely. the, uh, the one-trick pony is normally out in the first round unless they are just that good. But you run a gup against a team like this that in every phase of the game, they are just really good. It's going to be a hard-to-beat team down the line. And so uh, – Keep your eye on this Randolph-Macon team in the postseason. If, if you're just a football fan and like postseason football, uh, a lot of times those uh, big packages you buy on your uh, cable TV or satellite or whatever you stream these days will have games that you can watch these D3 teams deep into the playoffs. And this is one that I would keep my eye on. They're well-balanced and doing a good job in every phase of the game. Most of them you can go to their web page, and if it's their home yep. team, they will cover it. Um, Johnson not able to move the sticks on that play. Hutchins getting smothered there by a strong defensive line of the Panthers. Jamison Hackett on the tackle. Yeah, Hackett there on the tackle. Been very active here this afternoon on defense, doing a good job there. Going to bring up a fourth down and 14. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this is going to be their first punt of the afternoon. For the Yellow Jackets. 
Aguilar going deep for the Panthers. I'm sorry, that's Brent going deep to receive it. Hunt landing and being hit by a yellow jacket on a 30 yard line will be inside the 30 yard line, about the 28, 29 yard line. Well, this another official is going to change the spot. So, uh, yeah, it looked like it bounced off of Jaden Faria's shoulder pad there right around the, the 30 yard line, so, or right before they got to the 30. Yeah. Yard. Tad generous there by the oh, umpire. Oh, yes. Yeah. Going to give him another yard or two. Ain't nobody going to argue with that one on this Not side on the of black the black side, no. Yeah, you know, on this side of the stadium. So, going to be first and 10 opportunity here with three minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the ball game. Alters calling the signals. Mm -hmm. mm, smothered up quickly there. A lot of white jerseys piling in on that one. No room to run at all. Joshua Jordan on that carry. Joshua so you see Jordan both teams rotating in. Uh, some extra folks here at the end of the game getting reps in. Noticed a few more seniors out there getting, uh, getting some time for the Panthers here on their last home game of their career. Altus and Carr doing a Good job back at quarterback running this team for freshmen. Not able to hook that one up. Yeah, good, good pass to Mosby, you know, 6'2 wide receiver out there. Uh, you see the mismatch on size, got about five or six inches on the corner. Why not go ahead and throw it up, see if he can make a football play out of it. And uh, pretty close there, but just wasn't able to haul it in. Good job, good idea on that play. Does bring up third and 12. Mm -hmm. Used to say close, but no cigar. No cigar. Altus calling the signals. He's back to pass again. Oh, finding Mosby. I don't believe he knew that one was on the way. No, unfortunately, and it was well covered too. Had uh, two defenders in the area and was going to have to make a uh, athletic football play to come back and get that one. But like you said, don't think he knew the ball was in the air headed his direction and just out of sequence there with the quarterback. Going to bring uh, Deaton on for the punt. It's going to be, I think, his eighth of the afternoon today. Averaging 42.9 yards per punt. Marinella deep for the Yellow Jackets on his 35-yard line. Waving for a fair catch. Yellow Jackets will take over there on the 35. First and 10. Fair catch made on the 35-yard line. And let's see who they put on the field this time. We've been uh, busy trying to keep up with them on the uh, yeah, gotta rosters. Pull, pull out the longer rosters. Here late in the fourth quarter, making sure we get all the names right and recognition for the guys that oh, deserve it. Have. Score update out of Washington and Lee. It's 31, Washington and Lee, Bridgewater 21 with around a minute left to go. Averick still in the lead over Guilford 21 to 13 at half. Hutchin under center, handing off around the outside, getting a little running room inside the 44-yard line. That's Hill, Devontae Hill, the wide receiver cutting across there, picking up a, about eight yards, second down and two for the Yellow Jackets. Two minutes, 22 seconds left in this ball game. Highlights on defense for the Ferrum Panthers. Ashworth, 12 total tackles for the day. Howard at eight, Barton six, Callahan six, Hunter Canaday five, Hackett had five. Hackett also had a tackle for a loss, eight yards there, and a sack on the day. Mitchell Johnson on the carry, getting the first down, first and 10. 
Whoever they put in there, they just keep clicking off those first <laughs> downs. Mitchell Johnson, the running back, a sophomore. A couple highlights on offense for Farham. Altus was five for eight, 74 yards through the air. A lot of those to Mosby, who's got three Ooh. receptions for 70. It's Johnson again. Continues to rumble up the field. Mitchell Johnson on the carry. Lee at 50 yards on the ground. Two touchdowns for that young man today. So big, big day here for, for him. Long of nine. Carr had 41 yards on the ground today. His long of 11. Chapman coming in for the Yellow Jackets in the backfield. Yeah, clock now under a minute. Mike, it's been a good year here in the box Absolutely. with you guys. Whoa, Ball is on the ground. Ball. Kudos to these young men that have played hard all season, given it all they've got. The seniors, thank you guys so much for years of, of uh, service here at, at Ferrum and best of luck. We saw a lot of them out there on the field today. Not yeah. just football, had the cheerleaders and the band and cross country yeah. and a lot of folks out there being recognized. So, uh, yeah, great time here at Ferrum. The the future's Thank bright. You for being here with us today. Big game here. Randolph-Macon coming out on top of this one, 49 to 16. Glad you joined us. Go out and visit our sponsors. We appreciate you watching Firm Panther football right here on Cable 12.